In this video we will learn how to make a pie chart in Adobe Illustrator. So you'll go over here on the left, go down to what looks like a bar graph icon, click and hold, go down to pie graph tool, and then click and hold with your left mouse button and make the pie chart as big as you would like. And then you can add the values. Uh, you can first start with the first row and add the categories. We'll do apples, bananas, peas, carrots. Okay. And then you'll add the values. Let's do 50, let's do 20, and let's do. Let's do 30, let's do 20, and then 10. And press enter, and then press, press this check mark. Okay. Now, in the future, if you want to add another category, and you can do 5. Uh, typically, when you press enter, it'll update it, but in this case, it's not doing that. You can just press the check mark and that will add the update for you. But let's delete that last category and do the check mark. Okay, uh, you can exit out of that and you can uh, access it any time. If you want to move this graph, you just move it over. You see it added the, the, the legend for us. Uh, if you don't want it on the side like this, then you just right click, go down to type, and this gives you the different kinds of uh, features that you can add to the, the pie chart. So you can um, do the standard legend, you can do legends within the wedges. If you press, click OK, then it'll add the names within the legends. This one, of course, you need to change to white. Let's center this. Now you can always right click, click on data, and modify the data again and it'll update it accordingly. So if you want to change the colors, you can change the colors now. To change each wedge, you click on the direct selection tool and then click on that wedge and you can change it to another, cat another color. If you change the border color for some reason, that will not update properly when you add new groups. Go over here, click on the group selection tool and I can either click on one, hold shift, and as I'm holding shift I can click on the individual wedges so that I have all of them selected and I can change the border to white for instance. So we can go to one. Okay, so now if I were to right click, oh, click on this, right click type in data and if I were to modify this to 55 let's take a look so the one that I modified it changed the border to black okay so just keep in mind that each time you modify the graph you will need to um, recolor the border the, the colors maintain themselves but for some reason the borders do not okay now let's uh, change the color of the, let's, we can click on the individual objects again. Let's click on that one, change that back to white. Okay. Now what I'd like to do is change the colors of these um, wedges. So I'm going to click on the whole thing, go over here to color guide, and then go down to this little pinwheel thing. If you don't see color guide, it's up here on window and you go down to color guide. Okay, now you click on this pinwheel and uh, here's the colors. For some reason it added a white here. I don't know why it would do that. Let's bring these out. Okay, okay. and let's remove the um, the proportion lock. What you want to do is make these evenly distributed. So one, two, three, four. I'm not sure what this category here is. Doesn't seem to be changing anything. So we're just going to ignore that one. 
we're going to spread these out and we want the, these to be evenly spaced on this wheel so that you have the greatest contrast okay and that's looking pretty good and you click OK and that is your pie chart now there's one more feature I want to show you and let's let's select these so uh, we don't get distracted change these to black Okay. I actually like the light better but let's modify the data right click data and if you add another row let's do 5 tab 3 tab 2 tab 1 so just one tenth of what you have there and click OK what has happened is it creates a, a smaller pie chart right click data the values match the size so the area so this area on the left is 10 times larger than the area on the right but the proportions are equal so that's nice if you have different pie charts representing different populations of different sizes and you want to show the percentage of each population maybe of a particular demographic or in this case different uh, types of fruits and vegetables okay let's remove those and it will move that okay now the next thing you may want to do is you may be tempted to do is to turn this into three-dimensional I would discourage that but I want to at least show you how to do that if you are so interested so let's click on this go up to object and ungroup now this when you ungroup it you will no longer be able to modify the data so just click yes that's fine and we can move this to the side just for right now and let's click the whole thing I'm gonna remove the border and then I'm gonna go up to effect 3d materials I personally don't like the three-dimensional um, manipulation for the new extrude and bevel it's I find it challenging uh, to get it the right orientation that I want everything else about it is amazing but just I can't get it the right orientation it takes forever so I actually like the classic it works just fine so go down to 3d classic click extrude and bevel see it pops it out there and I just rotate that you get the little wireframe giving you an indication of where the pr perspective is that looks pretty good maybe move this down to 40 and press enter okay. now right click ungroup and let's move these over here now again I don't recommend a three-dimensional graph you can't really tell the proportions very well and um, this is not very scientific. It may look very fancy, but this is not very scientific. Okay, let's. Um, I'm going to undo all of that 3D nonsense, and now I'm back to the original pie chart. Now, just one last point before we end. This pie chart has four categories. Typically, you want to have a, at the max or at the most five categories within a pie chart. If you have 10 or 15 categories pie charts become less useful and so you might want to use a bar graph instead so that is how you make a pie chart in Adobe Illustrator